What up, it's your boy Nick here from MMA Pixels with Austin Springer. Austin is 10 and 3 professional mixed martial artist, tough 22 contestant, former Bellator fighter. How are you doing today, Austin? Good, my man. How are you? I'm doing great. You just had a, a huge victory last Friday at Northern Quest Casino. A amazing third round KO on uh, February 2nd. Can you walk me through that? Yeah, you know, uh, started out in, on our feet in the first round. Uh, you know, within the first, let's say, minute or so, I kind of got the feel for his timing, for his speed. Uh, and it kind of changed the game plan a little bit. Initially, I wanted to take him down earlier. But, uh, you know, I was having success with my feet. Uh, I kept it there a little bit, tired him out in the first and second round, and then moved for my takedown in the third. And, uh was able to get a knockout when he was on the ground. Awesome. I know you uh, started out with wrestling as your base. That was quite some time ago. Do you still consider yourself a wrestler, or are you a mixed martial artist? Uh, both. Um, you know, wrestling will always kind of be the, the backbone to my style. It will always be a thing that I fall back on. I'm sure if I get in a bad spot, then, you know, we'll be shooting for takedowns. But, you know... I consider it well-rounded. I wouldn't, you know, when filling out the little forms, I don't write that I'm a wrestler. I write a commercial artist. So uh, you were a contestant on Tough 22. What was that like? Not long enough. I would have liked to stay there a lot longer. Um, you know, it was an awesome experience, something that I was happy to be a part of. Uh, but, I mean, there's several guys on the show that I know that I'm better than. You know, I actually can't think of a person on the show that I don't think that I can beat. But, uh, you know, you can't have a good day at the office every day. And unfortunately, my bad day came on one of the most important days. So just trying to rally up some wins to get back uh, back to where I should be. Right. Well, you're definitely doing your part. I know um, even your fight in Bellator was pretty exciting. Yeah, that was, you know, probably one of my better overall performances, I would say. Having those big fights, does that make it easier going into these, uh, I don't want to say eat lower shows, but regional shows? No, it's actually the opposite. Like, the, you know, the bigger shows are easier to get ready for, easier to stay focused, you know. Nothing against my last opponent, but, uh, you know, on paper, it's a fight I should win 100 out of 100 times, I feel like. And so those are the ones where you have the most to lose, in essence. Where if you're fighting in front of the UFC, you're fighting in front of Bellator, you know, there's already a, a knowledge of, okay, you're, you're fighting the best guys in the world. So in the event that you lose, you're fighting one of the best guys in the world. On a regional show, if you lose, you're fighting with somebody that, you know, if you lose, uh, you're lost to somebody that's not one of the best in the world. Or maybe hasn't been discovered yet, I guess I should say. Yeah, I was going to say, because I know some some of opponents you uh, may lose to, and then they go on and have like a 20-fight win streak or something. Yeah. So I've heard a few interviews of yours, and uh, you say you like to fight at 145. You mentioned you're not going back down to 135, but I see you have. Uh, what weight class do you prefer? <laughs> you know, what's funny is... Uh... During the weight cut for this one, it's actually, I think right after the weight cut, I was chatting with uh, my cornerman. I was like, you know, I think I am about the perfect candidate for a 140-pound weight class because I'm currently a little bit too big for 35, uh, but I'm definitely undersized for big 45ers. So it's one of those things where it's just going to take a little bit of time helping my body to uh, to lose some of the muscle mass that uh, you know isn't functional for MMA to where I can compete at 135. It's a uh, very scientific approach to it. Do you have somebody helping you out with that? Uh, yes and no. I, you know, a lot of my coaches are, are very experienced, you know, and I have a, a meal prep company where, you know, they make all of my meals. They know what my goals are. and They make the meals, you know, portion sizes, calorie sizes, nutrients, uh, based off of what my goals are. Uh, but also, you know, I've been doing this, for so long that I kind of know how my body reacts to certain foods as well to where, you know, certain days if I'm dragging a little bit, I don't mind adding, you know, 150 extra calories if it's going to make the the workout that I'm getting ready to do substantially better. So it's just kind of 
through trial and error, as well as having a ton of help from, you know, companies like Alpha Meals and coaches at Gracie Baja. Um, you also have a great uh, support system, a lot of great uh, training partners. Can you tell me where you train at? Yeah, so I I run a gym in Vancouver, Washington called Vancouver Elite MMA. Uh, and so I do some of my training there, but, you know, as head coach and business owner, it's tough to get uninterrupted workouts at my own work. So I go to Gracie Baja in Portland, Oregon um, for all of my, you know, real training, I guess you can say that with other people running me through workouts, other people being there to instruct. Uh, and it's been awesome. You know, Fabiano Scherner, I, I think he's a 12 or 13 time jiu-jitsu world champion uh, in both gi and no gi, UFC veteran. And we got guys like at my same weight class, or so roughly there, you know, guys like Ricky Simone, Stephen Southern, Chris Williams. Uh, and then, you know, you have the high, high level guys like the, the Ed Hermans, the Chael Sonnens, uh, Paige Van Zandt. Having training partners in high level organizations, do you think that helps get your name recognized? Um, you know, yeah. Cause I, I really do think that oftentimes it's more uh, who you know than what you know. Um, and, you know, for instance, like, you know, Chael helped other teammates uh, like uh, Jake Smith get his deal. Um, and so I know that, you know, even if it's not a direct correlation, it's just having somebody there talking about you to those, you know, big name guys like Sean Shelby, like, you know, Mike Kogan, Scott Coker, or Dana White. It's, you know, they start to hear your name enough, uh, they remember you. Obviously, it's it's a goal of you to get there. Is that based on a, a competition level or financial level? Um, both, but... And I want to back you up a little bit there because the goal is not to get there because there have been thousands of guys that have fought for Bellator or for the UFC and that we don't know their name because they did nothing substantial. They did nothing uh, impressive to leave a memory in your mind. I don't want to just fight in the UFC. I don't want to just have a fight in Bellator. I want to have a long-lasting, successful career uh, that is also financially beneficial for me. So who are some of your biggest supporters? Uh, definitely my wife. You know, uh, as any pro fighter can tell you, it's it's not easy going through a fight camp, and it's not easy being the spouse going through the fight camp, uh, whether it be the, you know, the stress of the actual fight, whether it be the stress of the extra, you know, let's call it chores, the extra chores you have to do, because... When you're in a fight camp, you're, especially, you know, for me, the gym's, let's say, 20 to 30 minutes away. It's, you know, even if it's a two-hour training session, it's really a three-hour block of time that I've been gone. Plus, then you're getting home, you're showering, you know, you're eating to where so much of your day is lost in that training. And that my wife just picks it up and she, you know, picks up the ball and runs with it. She doesn't complain. She doesn't nag. She understands that it's for the greater cause and she just she's awesome it makes the training camps go so much smoother having that support who are some of your sponsors um so alpha meals as well as cna roofing uh really stepped up lately Uh, alpha meals provides all of my meals throughout the week uh again at those the portions and the calories that i need to not only get through the workouts but to also lose the weight uh, Royal Barbershop, 360 Fitness, 360 Cryo. Um, gosh, I got flat through all of them. Karma Fight Gear, uh, 110 Clothing, Bula Boy Charbroil. It's awesome Hawaiian food here in uh, Vancouver. Um, Handled. And again, you know, quite a few more. If you uh, jump on my Instagram, at Austin Springer MMA, or my Facebook pages, I'm always trying to tell people about these companies and you know one thing because i am a business owner and uh you know a successful local professional i have a lot of sponsorship opportunities and a lot of them i'm having to turn down just due to maybe it's not the best product line or the quality is not quite there so when i'm out there pumping up these companies it's it's not just any company these are companies or services that i have you know tried and believe in and truly believe that most people would benefit from so 
if you happen to see any of those things, just know that these aren't the you know any old company. These are ones that I, I firmly stand behind. If someone wanted to train with the best, how could we get a hold of your gym? Uh, VancouverEliteMMA.com uh, is probably one of the easiest ways to do it. We also have a Facebook page, Vancouver Elite, uh, as well as the Instagram page. Uh, it's a nice little setup we got there. We're in about a 30,000 square foot fitness center that is 360 Fitness. And so inside that, they have the basketball courts, the free weights, the cardio equipment. They have CrossFit. They have the cryo chambers. They have the yoga. It's basically like an all-in-one stop shop to where uh, you're not having to, you know, get nickel and dime. You don't have to go to your normal fitness gym here for 40 bucks. You don't have to go to your MMA gym for 120 bucks here. You don't have to go to, you know, all these different places. You can go to one place, play a smaller wage than you would if you went to all those separate ones, and you have the convenience of them all being under one roof. Yeah, that's awesome, the uh, convenience, I'm sure, going into fight camp. That's really important. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, there were two other sponsors. I, I apologize real quick. Affordable Auto Detailing, uh, as well as Rhino Fitness. Rhino Fitness, uh, it's an out, so it's not within my actual gym there, but it's right down the road. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Ryan Ayala does all my drink and conditioning. Uh, and if you were able to watch the fight, you know, third round comes, and I felt just as fresh as that first minute of the fight, and it's largely due to everything that he puts me through. The, the, the workouts that we go through, are 10 times worse than the fatigue that you'll feel in a fight. And I can't thank him enough for that that confidence that I have going into the fights because of my conditioning. It's awesome. It's got to give you a lot of confidence going into it. Yeah. You know, I coach high school wrestling, and one of the things I tell the kids is there's a certain confidence that you can't fake. And you know if you put in the time necessary. You know if you went on those extra runs. You know if you, you know, skipped out on the pizza and all of those little things add to the confidence when you go into a competition of knowing that you have earned the right and the you earned that victory months ago or weeks ago. Uh, and so thanks to you know companies like Alpha Meals and companies like Rhino Fit, like I I knew that, you know, weeks ago I had already, you know, punched my ticket and earned that victory Friday night. Is there anything that we didn't talk about that you'd like this to mention? Uh, not really. I'm hoping uh, to get one more fight here in March or April. I know that they're doing another contender series for Dana White uh, starting in May, so I want to get one more win so that way I can you know, be on their radar for that. Yeah, I really like that show, uh, Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. It's it's awesome. I like it. Yeah, I love the idea of being able to fight in front of him You know, one time, one night, rather than be potentially gone for 16 weeks for Ultimate Fighter because it's just way too long. Right, yeah, and it doesn't always show who the fighter is because you got to fight multiple times and usually you're at a weight class higher because of the weight cuts. Yeah, exactly. All right, I appreciate your time. Nick from MMA Pixels with Austin Springer.